Welcome to Appypedia QChat 2016's Mains Question Answer Discussion. Today we are taking this video for international relations as a comprehensive discussion so that uh, to save your time near the Mains examination. And uh, for the international relations we have identified four basic drivers of the international relation dynamics. First is energy, second is the geopolitical equations, third is the sovereignty challenges and fourth one is the culture. So all these are the basic drivers for the international relations, so to speak, energy being the first one, sir. So within energy, sir, there is a developed versus developing countries, emerging economies, so to speak. All of them have a diversified needs with respect to energy. And developed economies, since industrial revolution, they have been having a very high need. Emerging economies right now have a very high need with respect to energy. The dependency is on oil, gas, nuclear, yeah, and other uh, renewable energy sources. So, how do you see these equations affecting international relations? For uh, since a very long time, U.S. has been dictating energy prices, mm -hmm. especially oil. Okay. Now, uh, U.S. geopolitics of oil in Middle East. Uh, in context of that, U.S. would uh, place puppet regimes in uh, African and Middle East nations. Okay. So that they would feed interests of U.S. pertaining to oil needs, especially, okay. especially in Saudi Arabia, Tunisia, Libya, Egypt. Okay. Syria. Yeah. But then gradually when in lately in 2011 mm -hmm. when in Tunisia we saw the Arab rising mm -hmm. where a man molest, uh, immolated himself mm -hmm. uh, the uh, there was a uh, there was a uprising in all of uh, these nations wherein uh, they, they demanded civil rights okay. civil liberties. Okay. It is then when uh, US changed its uh, foreign policy orientation to uh, in Middle East and uh, decided that it would uh, change these, uh, replace these puppet regimes and would uh, not interfere in these nations. Okay. Now since then its relations with Russia changed and now uh, since Russia receives 70% of its uh, GDP from oil exports, uh, US has deliberately kept oil prices low so that Russia does not get funds to uh, uh, does not get funds to uh, source its, uh, finance its military adventurism, especially in Crimea. Okay. So this is how our uh, US has been influencing prices of oil and that has been hurting India a lot. Okay. Can so, we include the example of shale gas because I think the US shift is just because of shale gas. Is it? Yeah. Certainly. Uh, since US decided to exploit its shale gas reserves, the prices of oil have come down. Hmm. And uh, this has impacted uh, Russian revenues that mm. it used to get from oil exports. Mm. Gazprom, I guess, is the major PSU within Russia. Yeah. Okay. And East European countries are mostly dependent upon Russia for their oil and gas supplies. Yeah. And they go through Ukraine, so that was the bedrock of the Crimean crisis. Mm -hmm. And also it provides support access for Russia for the trade agreements. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, energy equation being one. Mm -hmm. Within this, India and energy. So, in this respect, I guess NSG clearance yes. for India after the Indo-US nuclear deal mm -hmm. and how we have been able to build the nuclear commerce afterwards. Mm -hmm. Yes. Secondly, uh, most of the renewable energy agreements that we have done with so many other countries. Mm -hmm. International solar so agreement. Yeah, yeah. National Solar Mission alliance. also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, International Solar Alliance. So, all these are emerging topics in India and energy. Mm -hmm. India's uh, agreement with Australia for coal exploration. Yes, Uranium, Canada, Uranium. Kazakhstan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have been uh, signing various agreements to exploit natural resources available with the other countries mm -hmm. outside India because that uh, availability within India is very low. Yes. yes. So that is also a dimension within this India and energy. Okay. The next aspect is uh, geopolitical equations. Mm -hmm. So geopolitical equations are usually based upon historical factors, mm -hmm. changing needs of a particular country, especially with respect to economics and national interest. Right. So here, what equations do you see building up right now? In context of South Asia, uh, there are a number of players uh, active in South Asian region. Hmm. Uh, firstly, there is China. Hmm. Now, China has been trying to secure its uh, oil routes okay. via South China Sea. Hmm. But then it got into direct confrontation with South Asian nations hmm. over demarcation of the Nine Dash Line. Hmm. And it was also concerned with piracy near the Magellan uh, Malacca mm. Strait. Mm. Then, uh, after this, uh, it tried to secure its uh, energy routes via Sitvi port in uh, Myanmar mm. to feed its uh, Yunnan province, mm. uh, wherein it wanted to resettle the Han Chinese mm. currently residing, residing in uh, Xinjiang province. Mm. Now, when Myanmar, under influence from US, cancelled those oil pipeline deals, mm. 
China shifted its focus to China Pakistan Economic Corridor, mm. trying to link it with Gwadar Port. Mm. Now, this Gwadar Port route, and along, along with the Hambanto development of ports in the Indian Ocean, such as Hambantota in mm. Sri Lanka, Gwadar in uh, Pakistan, Sitwe in Myanmar, then in Bangladesh as well, Ashuganj Port, Chittagong Port. Now, these ports uh, would give uh, China a leverage in the Indian Ocean. And what we call string of ports. Yes, string of ports. Okay. And then uh, what India, in order to counter China's string of pearls, mm. which it conce concedes to be a hindrance to its hegemony in South Asian mm. Ocean, mm. Uh, India has had uh, uh, engaged with, uh, especially with uh, Afghanistan and Iran, mm. by developing Iran's uh, Chabahar port. Mm. That would give India access to Central Asian regions mm. and further ahead to Caspian Ocean. Mm. Which a region which is rich in hydrocarbons. Okay. So geopolitical equations are basically based again upon the oil and uh, economic linkages. Correct. Uh, and infrastructure linkages are an aspect with respect to this geopolitical right, equation. Sir. For example, that uh, logistics uh, agreement that we had signed with the USA, that is also mm -hmm. uh, can be seen within this geopolitical equation. S but, uh, yes, certainly, sir. Uh, if we are to contain China mm -hmm. and stop China from uh, uh, harassing us mm. by stating uh, that uh, India should not consider Indian Ocean as, as its own strategic backyard. Mm -hmm. India decided to uh, follow a more uh, pragmatic uh, foreign policy. Mm. Uh, India decided to uh, align with US mm. with its US pivot to Asia strategy mm. and uh, lately signed the LIMOA mm -hmm. which stands for Logistics Exchange Memorandum of Agreement. Mm -hmm. Now as per this agreement, Indian and US naval forces would get access to each other's uh, naval mm. bases mm. for fueling, for logistics supply, for raw materials, for boarding and lodging. Mm. Now this would enhance India, Indian Navy's blue water capabilities mm. and uh, uh, this in turn would help India boost its trade to further nations in mm. say uh, West Pacific and uh, Atlantic Ocean. And most of these geopolitical equations are I guess uh, uh, based upon some sovereignty challenges also, which is the third part of my, uh, you know, international relation driver. So, sovereignty challenges, uh, for example, uh, India-specific challenges are there, like one rank, one belt initiative, of, uh, one road, one, one belt initiative. Road, one belt initiative. Yes. Yeah, and there is a maritime silk route, yeah. string of pearls, and we have given answers to them also. Huh? Mm -hmm. For example, Mawson. Mawson. Yes. yes. There are so Sagar many other. Sagar Mala. Sagar Mala. So, we have been, sovereignty challenges are there and answers are there. Mm -hmm. Similarly, from an economic standpoint, mm -hmm. we have uh, Bretton Woods institutions which mm -hmm. are continuously challenging. Yes. yes. For the mm -hmm. developing countries altogether and India also. And certain answers were developed through regional economic types. Mm -hmm. yes? yes, like uh, through BRICS, through mm -hmm. SARP, through ASEAN. Mm -hmm. We have been trying to build up some regional mm -hmm. aspect like Na uh, New Development Bank. Yeah. Yeah. AIB. Yes. yes. So we have been making answers to that challenges also. Similarly, from uh, other perspectives like trade, mm -hmm. WTO and the International Court of Justice, which mm -hmm. is always. Uh, holding the debate towards the side of the developed countries. Mm -hmm. So there also I guess uh, a sovereignty challenge exists so and uh, answer to that challenge is built through mm -hmm. building your own trading capabilities like in India we have Make in India initiative and so many others. Mm -hmm. We are having a brand build, building exercise through Narendra Modi who is going places everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, that is also building this sovereignty uh, equation. Yeah. So any light you would like to add? So uh, this Sagamala project, which uh, uh, which is an endeavor to modernize our ports, mm. this would uh, give a boost to our exports, especially tra uh, trade via sea routes. Okay. Now this would help counter China's string of pearl strategy, mm. as well as their maritime silk route. Mm. Now in context of uh, the uh, regional diplomacy mm. by way of regional groupings such as BRICS, SIPSA, mm. SCO. Mm. Such regional groupings would act as a platform for cooperation and engagement and help resolve peacefully the regional disputes there. Okay. For example, the BRICS Forum is an example of South-South cooperation. Mm -hmm. now, all the five members of BRICS nations are uh, developing nations, newly industrialized nations. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and they actually want to challenge the economic order which is currently being uh, held hostage by developed nations. Okay by way of IMF and WB. Okay. Now what IMF does is that it regulates, uh, it helps uh, nations to come tied over their uh, BOP crisis mm. but by putting conditionalities mm -hmm. that is they have to usher reforms in certain mm. areas yes, yeah. which renders the, the nation to uh, 
policies of exploitative policies of these, mm -hmm. these developed nations. Mm -hmm. World Bank, on the other hand, uh, plays a major role in directing uh, foreign direct investments. Mm -hmm. Now, when foreign direct investments through IFC, yes, through IFC, mm -hmm. through IDA, when it mm -hmm. does that, now the infrastructure development of developing nations mm -hmm. is uh, held hostage to such uh, to the views and policy making of uh, World Bank. Okay. And World Bank, IMF are both uh, uh, are both. Uh, uh, dominated by developed nations. Okay. Now, what BRICS want is it wants to create a substitution to these uh, mm. uh, to these IMF and WB, mm. uh, via, such as a new development bank and mm. uh, the currency reserve agreement. Mm. So, one more thing. So, uh, for example, from the political side of the sovereignty mm. challenge, mm. there has been a talk about the UN Security Council's mm. restructuring. Yes. So, India, along with some other countries, wanted this. There was a particular grouping that we formed. G4? G4, G4, yeah. So G4 grouping may uh, I guess there is Japan, India, India, Japan, G Germany, Germany, and and uh, there's one more Brazil. 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 Okay. So all of them want a restructuring of UNSC, mm -hmm. and uh, that also is a sovereignty challenge mm -hmm. for most of the developing countries who represent a lot of population but don't represent the political power. Yeah. Yeah. So it has to be a balance there mm -hmm. also. Okay. Now from the fourth perspective, that is the cultural perspective of international relations. I see many things happening today just because of the differentiation that is there in the culture. For example, Brexit. Yeah. That happened due to cultural differentiation. Then soft power approach which India tries to build on. Rise of right in Europe. Yes. Right ideology. Yes. NAM 2.0. We always had a culture of NAM, whether we not we uh, whether or not we followed it, but still we are trying to build upon the same culture. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then uh, within this culture approach, I can see South Korea and North Korea dispute also. You know, communism versus capitalism. Yeah. And uh, this culture uprising, mm -hmm. you know, it can be seen in Arab Spring also right. because the culture of democracy has also spread there in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. And similar cultural uprising or awakening or innocent, whatever you want to call it, that has been also a major driver. For example, our diaspora abroad. So they are supposed to be contributing to India's economic growth in a very uh, good way because so NRI remittances to India is the highest. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the contributions of that cultural diaspora into India is also a, a topic preferred by UPSC most of the time they see for it. So this is also a cultural integration concept. Certainly. Yeah. So how do you see this particular aspect? Uh, in context of uh, socio-cultural relations of India with the rest of the world, now Indians have been, uh, have uh, long, since long uh, rehabilitated and resettled in different parts of the world mm -hmm. in search of better livelihood opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, in context of US, uh, when in 1991 we had when we had the BOP crisis mm -hmm. and Indian government asked NRIs living in US to help with the capital. Mm -hmm. Now they uh, instead of helping us, they repatriated their capital. They withdrew their capital. Mm -hmm. But then when India realized that NRIs are a significant part of our economy and their contribution is significant if India is to establish good relations with other mm -hmm. world nations, it uh, shifted. Uh, there was a policy shift in our uh, approach towards NRIs, mm -hmm. and it wanted to have a greater connect with NRIs. Pravasi mm Bharatiya -hmm. versus yes. yes. BJP wala ne shuru kiya tha. Yes. Somewhere in 2000. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So 9th January. Yeah. Am I correct? 9th January. Yes. Uh, which uh, is the date when Gandhi ji came back yeah, to India. 1915. So yeah. that every year that day is celebrated to commemorate mm -hmm. uh, Indian NRIs yeah. who have a significant uh, contribution to Indian mm -hmm. economy. Yeah. So one more aspect of this cultural mm -hmm. aspect that I want to see mm -hmm. is that there is a culture of bureaucracy, there is a culture of uh, aristocracy, mm -hmm. and there is a culture of anarchy, mm -hmm. there is a culture of autocracy. Mm -hmm. All these cultures also are continuously flowing in the political regimes worldwide. So can we link the this culture revolution with the rise of ISIS? Yes, that's where, yes, I, that's where I want to go. Mm -hmm. So for example, Wahhabism, that mm -hmm. is the culture that is being promoted under ISIS mm -hmm. right now. So, a uh, little bit of light on that also. Uh, the rise of ISIS. Yeah. This uh, the fundamentalist extremist groups mm. uh, in Afghanistan, mm. who were driven out after U.S. invasion of uh, Afghanistan and then after that of Iraq. Mm. Now they re reunited in uh, Anbar province of uh, Syria, mm. and with their uh, stronghold in Anbar province, a city of Mosul. Mm. They have been trying to establish their uh, a state of uh, greater Islam, mm. which we call as uh, uh, Islamic state of uh, Syria and Levant. Mm. Now they want to have this uh, Islamic state and uh, 
and re-establish the uh, Sharia law. Sharia law. The hegemony of yes, the, the caliphate. Okay. Okay. Rejuvenate the caliphate okay. because they believe that the Western habits of uh, consumerism and capitalism mm -hmm. are the reasons behind their underdevelopment. Is there a Shia Sunni dispute also within ISIS? Yes, certainly there is a dispute between Shia axis and the Sunni axis. Mm -hmm. The Shia axis is led by Iran mm -hmm. and so allies are Iraq and Syria along with Lebanon, mm -hmm. whereas the Sunni axis is led by uh, Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. Now they are at loggerheads with each other mm -hmm. and they want to establish their own uh, uh, religion in the and, region. Uh, does the ISIS coming into picture redefine the equations with respect to terrorism worldwide? Right, All the nations are today mm -hmm. uh, joining hands to fight terrorism because it has uh, international presence today? Certainly. Yeah. Uh, this uh, in Middle East especially mm -hmm. wherein US had long been playing the geopolitics of oil. Mm -hmm. Now it has become a political tussle, mm -hmm. a, a war of hegemony, mm -hmm. is asserting your military hegemony as well as economic hegemony mm -hmm. between US and USSR. Okay. Now USA wants Assad regime in Syria to mm -hmm. go mm -hmm. because he's pro-Russian, mm -hmm. whereas Russia has been supporting the Assad regime. Mm -hmm. Now there are apart from the Russia and USA, mm -hmm. uh, there are two more stakeholders in the region. Mm -hmm. One is the ISIS, mm -hmm. backed by the Sunni axis. Mm -hmm. And then there are the Kurds. Hmm. Kurds are ethnic people residing in the bordering towns of Turkey, hmm. Syria, Iraq. Okay. And sir, what is the effect of this uh, present equations with respect to terrorism and their effect upon India and its security situation? The turmoil in the Middle East has uh, affected the oil prices. Hmm. This fluctuations and volatility in oil prices hmm. Uh, affects Indian economy a lot mm. in terms of import inflation. Mm. India imports 80% of its oil needs from abroad. Mm. Now when oil prices are so fluctuating, mm. the macroeconomics in India mm. will get readjusted mm. and then Indian economy will have to recalibrate in terms of uh, granting of loans, raising of FD, raising of debts. And will it affect our security situation that way? Uh, certainly, when there are uh, when there is turmoil in our near neighborhood, mm. that would have spillover effects in India. Okay, like? For example, in Central Asia, mm. where again there is a multitude of ethnic communities, mm. Shia, Sunnis, Christians. Maybe the Taliban yes. uprising right yes. now. India okay. fears yeah. that if ISIS uh, spreads its uh, influence in Central Asia, mm. that, would, uh, that would be a direct threat to India's uh, sovereignty and law and order situation. Okay. So sir, if we want to highlight 10 basic issues in IR which people must take care of during their main 2016 exams, what should be those 10 issues? Uh, they should focus on India's near neighborhood, especially okay. the near neighborhood countries, uh, Afghanistan, hmm. Pakistan, China, India's relation with Bhutan, okay. with Bangladesh especially. Uh, because Bangladesh is crucial for India's uh, development of Northeast India. Okay. So you mean basically the bilateral? Okay. Yes, bilateral okay. and okay. then we should move towards regional groupings, okay. especially BRICS and okay. IPSA because BRICS is trying to establish a new economic order mm -hmm. and India is leveraging on its soft power approach, mm -hmm. then India-Africa relations okay. and then India-Bhutan relations which are an example of good uh, relations between, model of model relations between a big neighbour and a small neighbour. Mm. Anything uh, with respect to foreign policy? Uh, foreign policy, we should uh, understand that India has moved away from NAM. Okay. That was an idealist policy approach, hmm. and we have opened. Uh, we are. Uh, we have agreed to engage with other world nations and follow hmm. a policy of pragmatism, uh, pragmatism and proactive approach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think uh, these are the four topics till now. So, what else would you like that people should take care of? I feel that our answers should be comprehensive okay. and uh, when we deal with our relations for example with China mm -hmm. and we mention Obor, String of Pearls, mm -hmm. Mossam, Sagar Mala, mm -hmm. we should be careful that we don't exceed the word limit okay. while at the same time mention that why the rift between US and China mm -hmm. has been to the advantage of India. Some historical background must be built into the question. Yes. Okay. But and uh, it should be referring to to the contemporary issues, the contemporary. not much towards the background. Must do. And the future aspect should Certainly. we balance that way? Yes. The conclusion conclusion of the answer should uh, end with twenty thirty words stating that if this happens, this would be good for India. Is it good to predict solutions in IR? No, it's not. But then uh, being practical in answers is good and giving a conclusion is IR is difficult. Mm -hmm.
Okay. We should be more uh, focusing more on the analysis part. More on the diplomacy part rather than yes. the concrete part. Yes. Okay. Okay. I think that should conclude our discussion on IR. Thank you so much.